Welcome everybody. I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting of the Maple Run Unified School District Board of Directors to order at 6.09. Today, 17 January 2018. We have eight directors present, two attending electronically, representing seven votes. First item is the agenda review uh, for the board. I would like to delete item 8A, truancy report as our truancy expert is skipping this meeting. She's truant. She's truant. <laughs> She's truant. Uh, any other changes we need to make to the agenda? I look for a motion to approve, please. So move. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Steve. Any discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Approve 7-0. At this point, I would like to open the floor for any visitors that would like to give testimony to the board. Ms. Horry. Hi, um, I'm Beth Horrigan. I was here two weeks ago and presented the board with a letter of support for Dr. Sean O'Dell to continue being our principal. Um, I turned in 48 signatures at that time. I have 125 in hand with more that should be coming in as the night progresses. So I'd like to turn that in to you. Thank you. Thank you. And just for the record, this is the same text, it's, same it's letter the that same you. Same text, same thing. Wonderful. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. I've already messed up the agenda because we didn't do the pledge. Please turn to the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I write it down so I don't skip things. Okay, at this point, uh, we'll turn it over to uh, Sean for the host site presentation. Thank you. Uh, I want to welcome all of you here to Fairfield Center School tonight. We have um, some refreshments in the back. Uh, Grady's Golden Goodness donated a beautiful couple of plates of baked goods I'm currently gorging myself on right now. Um, and those were created uh, for us by Jenny Fournier, who's one of our paraprofessionals and also a local chef uh, who does wonderful work for us. So thank you for the donation from Grady's Golden Goodness, and they've also provided some beverages, so please help yourselves. I'd like to start by introducing you to our outdoor classroom coordinator, uh, Jamie Tibbetts, who will get us started. So again, I'm Jamie Tibbetts. I'm the new Outdoor Classroom Coordinator this year. And I have a couple of guests who I'd like to come up. Um, the third grade class did Dairy in the Classroom with Mrs. Horrigan. And so I'd like to invite Jack Barney and Manya Tibbetts to talk briefly about that experience. Here we're making butter and we 
we had to shake the ingredients to actually make the butter. And then we ate the butter. We put it on crackers. I thought that during the costume was very fun. And it was especially cool. <laughs> a couple minutes to highlight things that may or may not be um, reinforced through some of the other presentations that the kids had. So this year we got to jumpstart our snack program by growing, harvesting, and feeding the Fairfield Center School student body snacks. And in the other picture that Dr. Odell just flipped by too fast, um, we had the opportunity to harvest pumpkins with the kindergarten class for Hay Day. <laughs> and here was our most recent activity. Um, this was making hot pepper jelly with the fifth grade class, which is the hot pepper jelly that's featured in the back of the room, so you have to have some now because the kids made it. And this was a new opportunity that we took advantage of this year. We did a gleaning program, and this was with the fifth grade class again. And this is through a partnership through the Northwestern Medical Center and Healthy Roots. We went and harvested over 959 pounds of vegetables uh, for our neighbors in need. Every year, Fairfield Center School contributes to the Thanksgiving baskets for the Fairfield Community Center. And the second and sixth grades worked together to make 19 pies. We came up one short. And part of the tradition for the baskets is to create a human chain lining up and down the hallways to hand off ingredients and then load them onto the bus for delivery. This was another new event that we did this year that I had a lot of fun with. We did a cider pressing day where every single class got an opportunity to run the cider press, which we borrowed from the community center. And in the mason jars towards the back, uh, I have cider that the kids had pressed. So there's more in the fridge. So definitely, again, you have to try some. And that's it, thank you. So we added on to our outdoor classroom offerings this year, and you're going to hear about that from Hannah and McKenna. Outdoor Classroom 2017-2018. The outdoor classroom does many things and brings many opportunities to Fairfield Center School. The outdoor classroom tends to our high tunnel. We grow crops to share with our community, school staff, and the Abbey Group. The outdoor classroom produces many fruits and vegetables for school lunch and school-wide snack. We also raise chickens and process them to provide healthy and fresh chicken for the harvest dinner. Something new we did this year was press cider press for the school. The outdoor classroom went and harvested apples that we homegrown right in Fairfield. FCS High Tunnel. The plants we used to grow our crops were planted by the 7th grade in their gardening unit. The plants are planted early spring and are grown until they mature under the lights in the science room. Once the plants are matured, they are then brought to the high tunnel and are cared for by our students until the vegetables ripen. The matured plants that we don't use in our outdoor garden or high tunnel are sold to the community members and staff. The 7th grade students do a gardening unit in our science class. The seventh graders plant and care for the seeds in the science room until they mature into little plants. We grow mainly vegetables. These plants get sold at the plant sale or planted in our high tunnel or outdoor gardens. The profits from the plant sales are refunded back to the outdoor classroom program. The money is used to buy seeds and maintenance tools for the high tunnel. Harvesting and cleanup. Harvest Dinner is an annual PTO fundraiser. It is a group effort from Fairfield Center Fairfield School PTO and community volunteers. As I mentioned in previous slides, the vegetables are grown in our high tunnel and we were used 
for roasted root vegetables. The vegetables were also chopped by students at our annual heyday. Chicken chores. Chicken and biscuits were the main dish and the meat was grown and processed here at Fairfield. Looking forward to the future. Earlier in the school year, we had a meeting with Rise Vermont hoping to get some funding to support our goals. One of our goals is to raise laying hens. With the laying hens, we would be able to sell eggs for our community. We need to purchase materials to build a safe chicken coop. Our other goal is to expand our winter crops. We would like to have more heat sources to provide vegetables to enjoy over cold winter months. Lastly, we would like to thank Jamie Tibbetts and Ms. Byers for putting together and helping the students at Fairfield with the outdoor classroom program. Bette Horrigan is going to come forward and introduce the next session. section. You don't need a microphone, do you? No. <laughs> nope. We did have notes today. <laughs> so before I begin, I do. It's about the Fuel Up to Play 60 program, and it's a free program from the National Dairy Council, which is your local farmers. They put money into it, and the National Football League. They collaborate with the USDA. It's in more than 73,000 schools nationwide, and it's program to encourage students to eat healthy and get at least 60 minutes of physical activity activity every day. Um, this program does provide funding through grants to assist with nutrition initiatives and physical movement equipment, and that is wonderful, but the more important component of this program is the student involvement. Um, a, a requirement of being a Fuel Up to Play 60 school is to have an active student group. These students are tasked with coming up with ideas, planning, implementing, participating, and encouraging participation school-wide to make their school a healthier place. In other words, they are the leaders. Um, there's so much I could tell you about the program and the national attention that Fairfield Center School gets within this program, but before the girls tell you about how much fun they have, which is true, I want you to realize that while they're telling you about the fun, they're spending a lot of time working during that fun. Um, at each summit, there are hours, and even at the national level, days spent in workshops, think tanks, collaborative activities, program design forums, and authentic speaking, public speaking opportunities. These students have very little downtime and come away with leadership skills they never knew they had. So without further ado, I would like to present Hannah Brannon and Lauren Kate Garso. They were attendees at the New England, come on up, New England um, Summit at the Gillette Stadium. And Kaylee Brannon, who also went to the Gillette Summit, but then went on to Minneapolis for five days for the National Summit. So here they are. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Kate Garso, I'm in seventh grade, and when I joined the Fuel Up team, I was in fifth grade. This year, I got asked to be on the, on the core team. Over the summer, we went to Gillette Stadium. Here, we have produced a little slideshow to show you our time in Gillette. We were in this picture, we're at the hotel, and we're getting ready to go to Gillette Stadium. We have a poster there that we had to make to, for the parade. The poster shows healthy activities that we do at Fairfield Center School. Hi, my name is Hannah, and I'm in seventh grade, and this summer I went to Gillette Stadium. So in this picture, we're making smoothies. So the challenge was to make a smoothie using certain ingredients from the different food groups and different colors. Um, and then they got judged by former NFL players and NFL reporters. And our smoothie turned out good, except we had to add something orange, so we decided to add pumpkin, which kind of didn't make it taste very good, but... <laughs> so we ended up not winning, but we still had a lot of fun making this smoothie. Here we get to meet Pat the Patriot, the mascot of the Patriots, and we pose for a nice picture outside the stadium. And in this picture, we're in the skybox. 
The skybox was very fun. Hi, I'm Kaylee, and I went to Minnesota. Um, I applied to go to the Viking Stadium, and then I ended up being invited. Um, the location of the trip was where the 52nd Super Bowl is going to be. While we were there, I got to meet Anthony Barr from the Vikings and we played football with him. We had access to the entire stadium with pro football players and the cheerleaders, and we got to run through the Viking ship. I was picked out of 180 kids to have a chance to win $1,000 for our school. I had to make a poster and come up with a plan for healthy eating in our school. I made a plan to involve third grade and younger kids in our gardens. I thought of a pizza garden. We had to present the plan to five judges, and I was chosen to win $1,000 from the ICAP Gen Youth Organization. Thank you for your interest in our field program. So our kids are, are definitely superstars, and um, one of the great things that's come this year that Beth did not talk about, but that she should be credited for helping them start, is that every morning at quarter to seven, it's quarter to, quarter to eight. Quarter to eight. Feels like quarter to seven. I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> at quarter to eight every single day, she comes in with the kids who arrive early, and there are probably a good 50 of them who get to school early for one reason or another, and uh, students actually lead them in 15 minutes of physical activity every single morning. So right in here, they'll be running back and forth, they'll be dancing, they'll be doing all kinds of activities, and the students are actually leading those activities with the younger kids in the school. And uh, that was a nice dedication of time from Ben and also from all those kids who are here every single day to do that. Um, we have some other superstars, obviously. Kaylee told me that she won $1,000 to bring back to the school to do pizza garden. Of course, I was curious what exactly a pizza garden is, but apparently it's just the stuff you grow on it. It doesn't grow pizzas, which is sad. Um, so Hannah, though, was the first few up to play 60s student ambassador at our school this year. She earned 30,000 points on fueluptoplay60.com by reporting healthy eating and physical activity on her student dashboard. So Hannah has since hit 45,000 plus points, which allows her to apply to be the student ambassador for the entire state of Vermont. Hannah's latest accomplishment was to complete a challenge in December, and for this, she is winning this Who Love to Play 60 prize pack value at $50. Hannah, come <laughs> Okay, that moves us to item six, which is our consent agenda. The only thing on the consent agenda tonight is uh, minutes of 3 January. Is there any reason why we would uh, need to take that off the consent agenda for discussion? Then if there's no objections, uh, these minutes will be adopted. Are there any objections from the board? Seeing none, the minutes are adopted. Move to old business, which is our budget. Martha? So I handed out um, before the meeting a packet to each board member and the um, task that you um, asked the administration to do from the last board meeting was to come up with what it would look like to come in with a 2.5% per pupil spending and um, a 2% per pupil spending. The first page of that packet that you just, um, that I handed out has at the very top is the information from the first board meeting. Um, the third section down shows the adjustments that we made to that first draft to come up with a per pupil spending of 2.46%, which is slightly lower than the 2.5. These are the areas that um, through administration, um, a meeting we had at the central office and some collaboration we were able to come up with these these um, adjustments to the budget. The second page gives you uh, an additional a list of additional considerations that I want to point out are not in any particular order. They're not in order by preference and/or priority. They are just other areas that, 
if need be, we would be looking at to come in with the, with the next round if the board so choose. So, so to be clear, mm -hmm. these items on the second page are not necessary for the two and a half percent. No, the, the items on the second page are not for the two and a half percent. The items for the two and a half percent are listed on the first page under adjustments made to budget after one three eighteen board meeting. Those so, are so we found forty nine thousand uh, dollars. Yes, <laughs> as much as I hate to say so, but we did. I mean, I'm you glad sure? we found it. Sure that's, that's all. Yeah, that's I looked, that's we looked it over. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so uh, there are some some adjustments, plus and minus. Oops. See what I'm missing. Um, there's a blank space there that was supposed to have a number in there, and it's uh, it's a nineteen thousand dollar plus. No, it's a nineteen thousand dollar negative. Sorry. Nineteen thousand negative. Yes. Yes. Okay, so these are the items that you would cut in order to get to this. Two point five, two point four six percent total uh, per pupil. So I see a math teaching position eliminated. Yes. Where's that from? That's from the high school. So what's on the second page? I missed that. I was looking at the first page. So the second page goes to the, the second task you asked the uh, administration to look at is if you wanted us to come in at something less than 2.5% per pupil spending. So these are additional? These would be additional considerations. And like I said, they're not in any uh, prioritized list in any way, shape, or form. They're, they're just items that have been discussed between administration as to areas we could look at. So it's, it's really hard for us to look at these cuts and know what the true impact would be. I'm wondering yeah. if we could hear from like the building administrators. Have they seen this? Have they looked at this? I, yes. They generated they generated this information. We sat all together in meetings. I sent it out to them this week. They reviewed it. We had no so, like that one either. So, so I'm wondering what. Yeah. So I'd like to hear from the building administrators on what the level of pain is. <laughs> these additional cuts would be to your schools. And our Crippling. <laughs> Can live with it, Joan. We'll start with you. <laughs> Do you want it on the first page? Yes. Yeah, the first page we thought we could live with. Only the first page. That's, that's the first page, so if you want to just look through the things that I put on there, yep. um, it's going to mean tightening some stuff, but it's stuff we could live with. There's nothing on here that I can't live with. Okay. What's the some of the testing and supply, testing supplies? Is that the 15th? No, what is that? The 2000? So, yeah, that's 2000. So it's not all of my money, but I just put it back. Is um, academic intervention, is this the whole amount of money? That's the whole amount of money that we had. And um, how critical? I think we're delivering it through a different avenue, so I think we're going to be okay. Okay. Angela? So on the first page, um, SATEC has uh, reducing um, professional development for staff. And then the 5% um, cuts, it says C list, but what that is, that's reducing the amount of money that we have available for direct student supplies, that's um, books, that's art materials, that's uh, PE equipment, that's across the entire board that's taking 5% out of a bunch of different budgets. So we will either not have those items for kids or teachers will have to buy them out of pocket. Um, so that's what that is. Um, the, the third item under SATEC, <clears throat> This actually came out of a conversation last week. Um, you know, the board asked us to find some funds. Um, that item was actually listed for us on the this will really hurt list. Um, but Michelle Spence presented um, a, a concern for the preschool at Barlow Street. Um, that space was not going to be made available to us. Um, you know, much after this year, we might get one more year, but probably not. Um, so we were trying to problem solve. Um, and so what this does is it would, right now we have, we have five kindergarten classrooms. 
Um, our average number of kids in kindergarten is about 78 every year. That's over the last five years. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's a little bit lower. And um, if we went down just to four kindergarten teachers straight, um, that would put us at kindergarten class sizes at 20 to 21. Um, that's why that was on, that's going to really hurt, but when we problem solved it, what that would do is it would take that fifth classroom and make it a combination kindergarten preschool full day. Um, and it would also um, allow us to remove the, the pre-K out of Arlo Street. And you see on there, that's where and Michelle can speak further to that, where the rent payment's out of there. Um, we're going to have to move out of there anyway. So that was problem solving that. But what that does through a conversation with Michelle, we would still be able to keep 10 kindergarten students in that combined class and only five full day preschool students. So that would actually, with our kindergarten, keep our, our class size would probably be more around, you know, 17, 18 um, with that allowance for that, that class to be there. It will take work through a grant that Michelle has because of the requirements of preschool. So it's a combined classroom. Um, we will have to be doing some pretty substantial work in one of the classrooms to, um, you know, to be, there has to be a bathroom in there. There's other, there's a list of requirements for preschool, um, but it, it is possible to do that. But it'll take, you know, it'll take some construction and some work. Okay. But with your rearranging, you'll still be able to keep the kindergarten classes down where you want them. The tenant is the numbers. I can't really hear you. I said the kindergarten, the, the, per, the kindergarten per, per student per classroom is going to be where you want it. It will be because of the brainstorming. I didn't, when we first talked about it, I didn't know how many we were thinking, but Michelle said you'd still be able to have 10 kids, kindergarten students, in that combined classroom. So that would, that would still keep all the classrooms at a reasonable level, you know, 17, 18, which is certainly preferable to 2021. Sure, um, you know, we've had the years where we've had bigger bubbles. We'd have to come back and talk to the board if we had that. But really, the last five years, we've been pretty consistent with about 78 kids in kindergarten. So if we're going on that, um, you know, that's, that's fairly consistent. And as you probably are aware, uh, the numbers of, of students in town is pretty strong and staying pretty consistent. So um, I'm not anticipating a really low number. Um, you know, that can happen too. You know, it is, it is harder for to, to predict. So that's what we have um, on the first page. Thank you. I actually have a question. Um, if a school and or a classroom applies for grants for materials that she's talking about, <coughs> Can they get that money and it not impact this budget? Well, Correct. Right. We just have to approve the grant over a certain amount as the school has the school will be. Right. Okay. Thank you. John. Uh, you'll notice that Fairfield is not listed on the first page. Our budget was very, very thin, and there was nothing that wouldn't be a gigantic ouch. So you'll find us on the second page. Fair enough. Chris. Um, so the math teacher belongs to a BFA. Um, we've lost uh, two math positions over the course of the last several years uh, through attrition. Um, obviously, that's a result of some of the declining enrollments. Um, this would be a loss by attrition. The uh, impact would be on some of our intervention classes, ways of trying to help kids who might be slipping through the uh, customary curriculum and providing a level of support. So um, our math seminar could be affected, as would um, our math labs, um, and possibly uh, fewer sections of applied math, which is used currently to try to help some of the students who may not be uh, as successful in the higher level math, some of the upperclassmen. So um, yes, we can make it work. Um, we can make anything work. Uh, we're very pragmatic and do what we need to do. Uh, understand that some of those intervention classes where we're right now we have teacher sections that we can devote to trying to support the students who may be struggling. We can do that now. Uh, we would be less likely to be able to do that uh, next year with the loss of a full-time equivalent teacher. 
So what I'm hearing is that there will be less offerings, to say the least. Okay. Uh, Leanne. Um, under, I'm at the bottom there. So the Outdoor Tech Program um, is a new program that we will be opening next year. And um, I'm able to cut some supplies as a result of using my federal funding through Perkins. Um, so I will write that in my grant in the spring, which is something that I can do every year. And then um, the co-curricular stipend, I currently have two staff members that each have a, a full FTE, and I would um, make each of them a 0.5. And they would share one position. Anyone on the board have any questions for the administrators on this? <coughs> Just, uh, Chris, is there... Is there a chance to use a, a maybe a half-time teacher and still have savings that would bring us under, and that would be for Martha also? Uh, would that even help? Yes. I think the challenge would be to finding a way to hire someone at a okay. lower percentage than uh, 100 budget. Yes. It would be helpful. <coughs> In terms of the central office, is that what the CO stands for? Right. Yes. Address that, Kevin. Martha? So, in, <laughs> under the central office, um, I went down through, and under the IT communications, that's what we, um, the line item where we pay for the internet service for the whole district. Um, I was able to reduce it by 4,200. Um, we budget about 60,000. But we do get some E-rate refunds. Um, I, we typically don't like to budget in anticipation of the E-rate refunds because they're not always there. But I did I did reduce it slightly um, um, in that anticipation. Uh, Board of Ed advertising. I, after looking over um, a couple of years worth of advertising costs, I was able to reduce that. Um, in the superintendent's office, it's uh, various accounts. Uh, supplies, travel, um, books and periodicals. Same with the fiscal services in the HR department. They're um, a little bit from each different account number, but basically supplies and travel, and those kinds of areas. So I have a question regarding the uh, math teacher. Well, Chris said that was going to happen for attrition. Correct. But I'm seeing a cut in the budget of, of $83,700. Is that what the final cost with benefits and everything is of a starting teacher? No, that's the cost of what we had originally had in the budget for that individual continuing on. But that individual is not going to continue Correct. on. So actually, the saving wouldn't savings. Well, that's how much we had in the original budget. Yes. So if we're eliminating the position, that's how much I'm removing from that. But so what that means is that the original budgets will, in fact, be a little bit lower. Could be because of that teacher being gone. Um, if we don't, yes, we don't retire. If we don't retire. Yeah. Or even if you do, yeah, it could be a little bit lower. It could be a little bit lower. The teacher is not going to be you know, four thousand dollars. Okay, okay. Just, right. just trying to understand it. So, so you were going to pose for a math position? Yes. That. That's not that's not a short thing. This is this is a person. We can't get into this too much because of personnel. personnel. Mm -hmm. But this is a one year position, one year contract that's at the end that ends at the end of the year. Do you have um, information on what this does to the tax rates? Yes. So that would be on a page that looks like this. One with a spreadsheet with all the numbers. <coughs> it's like the third or fourth one down. Second to the last. Oh, there's more paper here. Yeah. That's just the, the detail of the uh, different so line items. Okay, thank you. So um, the, previous, um, the previous sheet that I 
supplied at the board meeting on this did have some calculation errors in it. It had a formula error, and I did resend that out to the to the full board. The um, the previous budget that was presented um, re would have resulted in a tax rate increase by municipality, um, eight cents to city, four cents to town, and slightly less than three cents to Fairfield. With this um, budget as being proposed with the, with the adjustments that were made, we're coming in at a 2.55% expenditure budget, which um, calculates out to a 2.46 per pupil spending increase which comes out to a equalized tax rate of $1.56, which is 8.5 cents over the prior year. We have our merger incentive of 8 cents versus 10 cents of last year, so there's a two cent gain there. So the um, tax rate after the merger incentive over last year is 10.52 10 cents increase. That um, tax rate then gets disseminated by municipality based on the equalized pupil counts from each municipality. So that would give a prorated equalized tax rate for city of 65.71 cents, town 62.86 cents, and Fairfield 19.66 cents. And then you do your common level of appraisal adjustment, which um, each municipality's uh, common level of appraisal went down, which means that increases your tax rate. So after the common level of appraisal, city is looking at a 71.58 cents, town at 60.64 cents, and Fairfield at 21.4 cents. That would be the tax rate that the individuals would see on their tax bill if the state legislature doesn't change the yield. This is based on the 9842 yield. So what I'm interested in is what the difference in the tax rate is from the budget that you presented last meeting to this one. So if you look just below where it says how much various, uh, various components affect tax rates, the very first line showed the tax rate increase, the tax rate impact, based on that first budget that was proposed. So city would have seen an $0.08 cent tax rate increase. So that's the 3.1% per that's, people? Yes. And town would have seen a four cent increase and Fairfield slightly less than three. With the one that's presented now, we're looking at city at a 7.6 cents difference, which is half a cent. Half a cent. Um, town is looking at 3.68 cent increase, which again is about a half a cent. And Fairfield is looking at a 2.65, which is two-tenths of a cent. <laughs> 0.15 cents. Yes, 0.15 cents. So that's the, the difference. So not a lot of difference. Not a lot of difference. Um, there's, there's been, I, I, I might add to, to tag team with Matt, that there's been a lot of discussion statewide about the, the lower yield this year. It's hitting every single school district in the state significantly. Uh, districts, in some cases, getting 10, 20 cent increases. Um, and as you just noticed, Jim, what's, what's interesting about this, I hate to use Martha's term about it's all in the math. <laughs> it's interesting because of that low yield, even though our equalized pupils are pretty much the same as last year, a half, you've seen what, what a half percent cut in our per pupil cost would, would do. And uh, to put it all in uh, perspective, it only saves a half a cent on the tax rate. Um, that's a, like, maximum. Maximum. It's like two, less than two tenths of a cent there, Bill. Yeah. Um, Martha, if if they change the yield, and we know they will, will that affect the per pupil cost? Yes. It will. Mm -hmm. 
actually, let me take that back. It will not affect the per pupil cost. It will just affect the tax rate. It will not affect the percent increase. Correct. It will not break. Right. And the governor's asking for a two and a half percent. Yes. And just for, um, just because I have the information here, uh, talking about the change in the yield from last year to this year, just by having that yield change from 10,160 last year to 9,842 this year, that in itself created 5.74 cents of the tax rate increase for city, two cents for towns, and two cents for Fairfields. So just that yield change added that much of the amount that we're talking about of the tax rate impacts. So to add to that, Martin, tell me if I'm wrong. I'm hearing you correctly. If we use city as an example, and the yield cost us 5.74 cents. 5.7 cents. And you add the two cents on for that incentive that we've lost. That almost makes the tax rate at the city a wash. Correct. Even though we've come in pretty pretty well with our with our budget. Yeah, but my tax bill is going to go up. Correct. There's no wash to it. <laughs> right. The effect of the deal is the tax rate increase. That's right. <clears throat> so, I don't know how the rest of you feel. I'm actually a little torn. I'd, I'd love to hit that 2.5%. For one thing, that's what's going to be on the ballot when people go to vote. Um, but I really don't like the idea of, of uh, having less offerings for the kids. I mean, the whole idea is to try and provide more opportunities. Well, I have a question on page two, which we probably haven't gotten to. Is that are, are the numbers on page two brought on page one? No. So is those, are those, these are the paint effects that you mentioned? Those are the those are, are those 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 real paint. Plain, the, is that, are they absolutely necessary? No. No. Okay, so if we didn't do these cuts. It all, it all is dependent on what the board decides you want to do with your purpose <clears throat> spending. Just, just to remind the board what happened at the last meeting, it was discussed that we had a 3.1% increase and that it would be good to follow the uh, governor's recommendation of 2.5, which we agreed to look into. And then there was a discussion about, well, then let's, if we're going to do that, let's also look at what it would happen to go to a 2.0. So that's, that's why you have your, your painful and your very painful um, to, to show you the impact of going to a 2.5 and a, and a uh, 2.0. So adding phase two would be the 2.0? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. all right, so I'm still not in favor of any of that stuff. So the language we work too hard to keep, <clears throat> to get, really. Kill it now, it's not so, so the truth of the matter is, going from 3.1 to 2.5, yeah. does virtually nothing to the tax rate. I mean, it's like half a cent here, half a cent there, and, and like 1500 So at first blush, you'd say, why do it? Um, except for that's the number that's in the, in the ballot, and that it could make the difference of the budget being approved or not. Right. That percentage is printed on the ballot. You think? That number is printed on the ballot because I love the amount of change. It's by statute. It's by statute. That language in a percentage. In a percentage. Yep. And the governor, refresh my memory, is asking for a two point not to go no higher than two point five. Is that like a? A suggestion? It's not a mandate, it's a recommendation. Recommendation. Without getting too far in the weeds, his feeling is if everybody stuck to 2.5, it would allow them to do that yield that they're doing statewide. Because remember, we're a statewide property tax. Property tax, yeah. 
Um, and if everybody in the state stuck at 2.5, it would allow them to go to the 9,800. Um, per pupils? No, that's the yield. The yield. yield. Okay. So if school districts went over that statewide, then that would theoretically make the yield even worse for the whole state. Uh, if that makes sense. So, <clears throat> many school districts, not all, are really trying hard to stick to that 2.5. Unfortunately, if you've ever, if you watched, listened to Digger at all, or if you've seen some of the papers, there are some school districts not doing that. Uh, I would just say that I think the administration as a whole, who have had discussions, completely get what the board is looking to do and stick to what the governor is trying to do at 2.5 and willing, and able, and, and, and work hard to try to do that without causing major pain. There are some school districts. Our, per, our equalized people count was basically flat from last year. There are some school districts out there that they their equalized pupil count went down like 30 equalized pupils and they're having massive cuts to their budget still and still having double digit tax rate increases so we're in a so chris the only way the only way you can um, make up that money is to cut that position huh there's always other ways um, we've looked at our personnel hard over the last four or five years. Um, the academy's experienced a loss of 17 teachers over the course of the last five years because of the declining enrollments. Um, some of that, I believe, was necessary. I think we're at a point now where further reductions will cause um, impact, as I mentioned, on student offering. Um, when you're looking at the kind of numbers that you asked us for, um, pretty much personnel is where uh, most of the money is. Uh, we have an opportunity based on some of the work that we've done with the DMG group to look at attrition. And as you know, because I know you were at some of those seminars with us, um, we talked about that as a way of being able to reduce personnel costs and then um, reallocate resources as appropriate throughout the rest of the budget. The short answer is yes, we could probably find other ways to get to uh, that number, but that was one based on um, our enrollments and on the uh, the fact that you don't want to continue to affect other areas of the budget. Uh, and you had an opportunity for attrition, that one seemed to make sense, um, and so it was it was on the list. This would have a few ripples going out. I, I'm having heartburn over getting rid of the math teacher and cutting uh, the, the kindergarten at SATEC. Uh, you know, we have commercials running that say we're number 38 in the world for math among our students. And uh, 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 commercials running for, from the state of Vermont promoting math and science, uh, equating them to getting better jobs. So if these things like the seminar and, and the labs and the applied math are making a difference. I think I have, I have a little, I, I think I have a big hard time with that. Um, and if there was something else we could find, or if, are we allowed to uh, consider keeping some, some things in here, Martha, and, and taking, it just moves the number. It just moves the number, right? Okay, so um, that's the two th that's the two things I have problems with. So, <clears throat> um, hey Al, Jack, you got you guys want to weigh in on this? Of course, they don't have a copy of this. Oh, right. I didn't realize that they. Yeah. You want to blindly weigh in on this? <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that as we were going there. Nina, kind of quiet down there. What do you think? Well, you know what? I had it on mute so you wouldn't hear the heating system. 
Um, so, okay. Here in uh, Hardwick as principal, we're here, we have a budget around $300,000 less than our current year, and yet we have to go up uh, three and a half percent. To make it two and a half percent, if the cuts would have been so drastic, that uh, the board didn't feel that was uh, honorable to the students. So. Okay. And if you stick, I mean, it's recommended. It's not mandated, right? That's right. We could, I mean, we could stick to the 3.16. I mean, I don't really feel too bad about that because it doesn't do much to the tax rate. That's kind of we just got to sell it. I don't think it's going to sell. I really don't. Say that again, Do you Gina? think the governor is going to try to I'm sorry. get a campaign around his 2.5% and tell people not to vote for budgets that are over? I mean, like he sort of did last year. No. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I'm just, I don't know. You obviously can't read his mind, but. I didn't hear you. I said, is it mandated at 2.5? You, you said, what about selling it? I don't think it would be hard to sell for 3.1. Okay. I mean, we're Thank showing you. our work. I, mean, I, I, I agree. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I do too. I have a hard time. Actually, I have, have heartburn of the pre K stuff because the science shows the importance of pre K. And it just. Well, I'm, I'm not sure you understand that. Nothing's going to be heard. In, in fact, I, there are many of us who feel that that's a cut that's actually going to ha enhance the program. Pre-K will move over to SATEC, so it'll be just like City is doing now with the Pre-K K program. You'd have to do, and you'd have to do some construction. Uh, there, there would be no cut of any per person there would be a class that would be pre-K and K, just like Jones doing over in City. So there would be some consistency. It says reduction of K teacher, though, to create a pre-K K classroom, so it's a $68,000. That's a position cut line. Through because that's through level. attrition. It's, it's a kindergarten position cut through attrition. Oh, okay. So we would put a pre-K teacher in the town school so that Right now, those that classroom, that, that Barlow Street does not have access to a nurse. Does not have access to you know. There is a situation today in the neighborhood of Barlow Street. There's not a school resource officer up there. You know, there's there's support <coughs> schools have that we don't have in Barlow Street. Isn't this going to happen anyway? From what it sounds like. It sounds like it's going to eventually happen. Yeah. So this would just push it up a year. Right. We, we're trying to be a little proactive so we don't get noticed that we don't have space at all anymore and then we don't know where to go. Okay. Angela has her So, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm Thank you up. for that clarification. <laughs> so, well, it, it would be reducing because we have a retirement, so we'd be reshuffling people around. So that's why that money's in there to reduce. And if you look at our size and the numbers coming in, because I think um, Sachs has six kindergarten with one or two combos. Is it just one, Joan? Right now we have one combo. One combo and you have six so kindergarten five. classrooms. If you think about the numbers coming into town, if you go down from five to four with one combo, if you were able to keep the five and we could work with Michelle about, because I didn't realize that that was a, a looming deadline for the Barlow Street. If we could continue to look at SATEC and still do some work about getting the Barlow over, we could still maintain, you know, I think there would be a benefit to maintaining the five and then having the additional combo if that's what people are talking about because it is within the SATEC, it is reducing through Position. Well, to be clear, that's that is our goal, mm -hmm. is to mm -hmm. lower the number of adults per right. student. Right. Yes. So, if you're going to bring a teacher over, and that's what I, is that what I'm hearing? Right. So, so there's two classrooms at, at town school right now. One of them serves um, two sessions of preschool, a morning and an afternoon. So there's 30 kids being served in that classroom. The other classroom is a full day preschool expansion classroom. That grant is ending. Next year is the last year of that grant. There may be an, an additional year. We're not sure. Um, so we haven't had the conversation about how to sustain that or not. 
So what a move of Barlow to town would do is maintain the kids at Barlow. So if 30 kids being served at Barlow, the two classrooms at town would become two part day classrooms. So we maintain the 60 kids in a part day session. And instead of serving 15 children in a full day classroom, we would be able to serve five. So it does reduce the amount of full day pre-K kids at town school. But it's still, we, we still give us some capacity for that for right now. And it allows for the overflow of kindergarten so the classrooms aren't so high. So we're not going up to 20 or 21 students in the kindergarten classrooms. And, and it allows us to reduce a teacher from the budget. Yeah. And, and eliminate the rent. The rent. Yes. At Barlow. So where did the other 10 students go? Then you said 15 to 5. We would, we would have tuition money that's in our budget currently that they could access to be tuitioned into partner sites. Is that as good as being together in, in, in one place? It's parent choice yeah. um, and it's in the law and there's many families that prefer it. So okay. this is we also have Head Start in our community that offers full day classrooms too. So if those, any of those children are Head Start eligible, they would be able to go to the Head Start full day classroom as well. And, and I just wanted to say, if you were looking at the numbers of K kids coming into city and town, we have very strong numbers. You know, if city school has six K classrooms and we would only have five, you know, if we were able to do this with, like, making an additional space without losing that, that would be helpful. If we can't, we can't. Like I said, on that first page where that kindergarten came at, that was actually our, you know, that was our, like, harder list. But because of trying to collaborate with that, we were trying to put that out there. So, you know, there is impact, but I just wanted to say that because the kindergarten is, um, you know, it's a really important year in the kids. Yeah, and I keep it in mind. I mean, you know, anybody who has small children knows capacity is limited in terms of where you can send your children right now. So reducing spaces or slots gives me a little comfort. Yeah, me too. Me too. I agree. I mean, you're going, yeah, that's all I'm saying. I, because I, just, it, it, I don't love it enough. To right, it's a relative to unknown to those 10 kids if they're going to find spots in partner sites, or is it guaranteed? You're at all of our high quality preschool programming in yeah. our county. It's, it's not a debate, it's, that's, that's a fact. So the question I have for the board is, do you think the impacts from this cut list is compelling enough to move off the 2.5 million? To go a little higher. To go to 3.16. I'm not sure it is, to me. I don't like a lot of the cuts. Well, what about meeting in the middle? We come into this, this is the first cut draft, if you will. <clears throat> Keep the kindergarten on. Well, we have to approve this by, well, tonight we need to approve it, right? Tonight, or you have to have a special board meeting it has to be adopted to be able to be warned by February 3rd, I believe, the date is. <coughs> so you're suggesting possibly keeping some of these cuts. Yeah. Um, Line out a veto, if you will, a couple of those, and then say, if it comes out to 2-7, then there's some cuts to it, let it be. Well, I think if we're going to go 2-7, we might as well just go to 3.1. I mean, the whole idea for the 2.5 is trying to to meet the meet somebody's goal. Sure. Were you saying that outside enough of our schools, system. Sorry. Yeah. If enough schools in Vermont choose to go over the two and a half, the yield rate could possibly drop and that could impact us when? This year? Tax rate. Yeah. So it's these a, tax rates, I just want to make sure everybody is very clear. These are estimated tax rates. Yeah. They are by no means the final tax rate. If that, if the legislature adjusts that yield, the tax rate will change. And if it changes, it's likely to change lower. Well, it depends well, on what all the budgets can do. All we can do is, is pick a point. And that's true every year. And okay. we never. Right. 
All right, we're going to adjust the dial so we get. All right, because it doesn't affect the tax rate much. Okay. The board feels like they want to stay with the original budget. I think so. That seems to be what I'm hearing. Do we have to vote on that tonight? Yes. Yeah. So we would vote to approve the budget that was presented. You would you would vote to adopt the budget for that specific dollar amount. Okay. Which, if you want to make that. Al. Is that Al or Jack? I don't think I would either. Okay. <laughs> the aliens from outer space. Really? Okay, so we're right now we're talking about a number that's that fifty-four million five twenty-nine number. Correct. Who wants to make the motion? I do. I'll make the motion to adopt the budget of $54 million, dollars 3.09% increase over the last year. Is that correct, Martha? Correct. Okay. Have a second? I'll second that. Denise? Mike and Denise. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Extensions? Is that with us? No. I'm going to say not. Approve 7 0. Did, did Jack say aye? Yes. He did. Yeah, I wrote it. Well, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that takes us to the warning approval. This should just be filling the blanks, right? Yes. <laughs> so I did attach. <coughs> To the agenda, sorry. Um, we approve the warning uh, there. Right. as printed. Well, we're going to want to make minor adjustments. We need to fill in the blanks. Yeah, we need to fill in the numbers first. Yes, that's the only one I believe that needs any changes. We did make the minor adjustments that you had requested at the last board meeting, which were the grammatical errors or corrections. Okay. Um, and we did add that sentence on Article 4 that this will not affect the tax rate okay. as uh, requested. <laughs> In the blanks on Article uh, 6 would be the first blank. It would be reading shall the legal voters of the Maple Run Unified School District number 57 approve the board of directors to expend $54,529,488, which is the amount the school board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018. It is estimated that this proposed budget, if approved, will result in education spending of $15,481, per equalized pupil. This projected spending per equalized pupil is 3.16% higher than spending for the current year. For motion to approve the warning. Second. Discussion on the warning. All right, have a motion. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Oppo opposed? Extensions? Warnings approved 8 0. Brings us to new business. Uh, item I've, got a, I've got a question, Jim. Fire away, Jack. How many uh, signatures do you need on the warning? We typically like to get all the board members, so we would um, ask the board members that were in attendance, even via electronically, that we will get their signatures on the warning. So he can stop by and sign. So Jack, if you could sign in, come in sometime. We'd like to have everybody sign. Right. And bring it down. And I'll and we can bring it to Al. Okay. So yeah, I'll try to come in. Uh, you know, sometime. Uh, Friday afternoon or something like that. Just let us know. 
Yeah, we're, give we're, me an excuse to leave early. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to uh, item 8B, policy 20 facility use. That would be Kathy, Kathy? that would be uh, speaking to it. Uh, she's not here this evening. This was the um, facility use policy that was presented at a prior meeting. Let me just get to the attachment here. Right, so this and, it was, and it was warned. It was warned to be adopted. And there were no comments. There were no comments. All right, we'll take that as an indication that the board's ready to adopt. And I'm for a motion for adoption. Just for what you just said. That's that's Oregon. Mm -hmm. Did you want to speak that? Well, I just I saw that it was warned to be on February seventh on the door. On the door. This is our second reading of it, right? We read it at the last meeting. It's probably yeah. because that would be the business meeting, the first meeting of the month, so it can be it can be taken. No, I just so that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let's I just hadn't had a chance. Mike had pointed something out. And Right, so let's push it up. The motion to the table, or we'll just push it in. Or, or yeah, we don't have any motions on the table, so yeah. move on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Okay, that brings us to item uh, 8C discussion of Fairfield Center School principal position. Um, so at our last meeting, um, we received uh, a number of signatures on this letter that I read at the last meeting, and today we have received more. Um, and understanding the intent of this, I asked the superintendent to have some negotiations with uh, and some discussions with um, Dr. O'Dell as to um, becoming the removing the interim title um, from his position. Um, as many of you may or may not know. Um, the board hires principals um, at the recommendation of the superintendent. So the superintendent would need to bring a name forward for us as a recommendation before we would hire. So I asked um, Kevin to be ready to give us a recommendation tonight, and I will ask him tonight if he's ready to do that. I am, um, after much thought, and um, after seeing the, the community input we got both from the petition and from the survey, and uh, reviewing the performance of Dr. Adele since uh, July 1st, when he came in, um, and in discussion with Sean, knowing that he does, is, does have interest in staying at Fairfield, uh, my recommendation is that we um, take his interim title away and make him principal of, of Fairfield School effective immediately. I'd like to make that motion. I'll second it. I'll third it. Does <laughs> <laughs> part of the motion need? Uh, we have to have a discussion. So, okay. um, question, um, have you negotiated a contract with uh, Dr. Odell? Yes. Okay. So if approved tonight, we can, uh, we can put the ink on it? Yes. I would love that. <laughs> we have a motion. And a second. And a second. And a third. Is there any more discussion? <laughs> Time to call for a vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 8 0. Woo! community wanted, we have what the superintendent wanted, we have what Sean wanted, we have what the board wanted. It's a win, 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 win. Wow. wow. <laughs> like uh, Jack said, dilly dilly. <laughs> um, Congratulations. So before we go any further, I would like to personally thank uh, Bet. I came to her a month ago uh, for her counsel um, on uh, this could be a very tricky situation and she gave me some good advice and she did a lot of groundwork, so thank you very much. Wow. All right, 
we will sign that contract before we leave. <laughs> Other business, warrants. We have warrants. Motion to approve the warrants. Thank you, Mike. Move the warrants be approved. Thank you, Al. Any discussion on those? Still a lot of money. Still a lot of money. <laughs> uh, all those in favor of approving the warrants indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Extensions, 8-0. Superintendent's report. Superintendent's report will be brief tonight. Somewhat. Um, I don't know if the board knows this, but the state legislature uh, has stated that this is school board recognition month. And they have come up with a resolution and I'd like to read the resolution to which I agree with and I think it's important for you to, to hear this. Um, whereas the elected citizen members of Vermont school boards are extremely dedicated public servants and whereas school board members devote countless hours to overseeing all local jurisdictional aspects of public education in Vermont and at most receive token monetary compensation and whereas they tackle education policy issues that are of enormous co concern to school administrators, teachers, parents, students, and the citizenry at large, and whereas certain matters confronting school boards may resonate strongly with a specific constituency, and whereas school board members must occasionally decide potentially sensitive and divisive questions, such as whether to continue the tenure of a teacher, principal, or superintendent, and the individual whose job is in question may have both strong supporters and strong opponents, and whereas, although they are not the originators of state education laws and administrative directives, these locally selected public officials may experience public criticism regarding Vermont's education policies, and whereas the passage of 2015 Act 46, school board service has become more challenging as it involves deliberations to determine the future composition of the state school districts and boards. I'm almost done. And whereas school board members have labored with their communities many additional nights and weekends since Act 46 was enacted to consider how to improve the educational opportunities for their students, and whereas in facing these difficult and possible conflicting demands, school board members receive too far, little pro, uh, far too little praise for their public service, and whereas a number of states and local communities throughout the country observe January as School Board Recognition Month in order to honor the special work of school boards and this honor to Vermont school boards and their members is well deserved. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the General Assembly designates January 2018 as School Board Recognition Month in Vermont, and be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be directed to send a copy of this resolution to the Vermont School Boards Association in Montpelier. And I would just say thank you for all you do. That's my report. And we got you a cake. <laughs> it's in the back. Oh, uh, thank you. There's actually a cake in the back that says, thank you, school board. So get a piece before you leave. And there's That's petitions fire. floating around for people that want to get reelected to the school board. So please sign them before you leave. <laughs> you got that the Sean, uh, yeah. have you down we'll for administrator's report? <laughs> My administrator's report. You have a piece of cake if you sign it. It is attached. Uh, plenty of information in there. I just want to thank the community for the trust that they have put in me. I um, am humbled and honored to serve, and uh, thank you for that. Thank you to the school board as well for the trust you put in there. All right. Thank you.
Rose Royce. I think so. Take advantage of the opportunity to invite you all to the College Pearly Campus Friday night. It's a very special event. Uh, the BFA cheerleading squad will be hosting cheering, cheering teams from throughout the state. I believe there are 20 teams this year. The Susan event started by Mrs. Rulo six years ago, probably. Almost a decade now. Almost. Um, We're getting all deep. <laughs> I that. Anyway, it, it's very special in that the BFA cheerleaders run the event. Um, they participate only as an exhibition, but what they really do is get involved in a little bit of management, uh, directing other kids. It's, it's a real learning experience for them. It's a bit of a fundraiser. We'll expect 1,200 to 1,500 people to attend from throughout the state, so it's a, a boost to our local economy. And it's just a really, really nice all-around event. Do I hit all the key points? Uh, it's the only competition uh, geared toward youth. So it's not a high school competition. It's geared towards youth. Ages 3 <laughs> all the way up to 18. With the older ones, um, the older teams exhibiting, like you said, with the younger teams competing. And they go as young as age 3. So this, this Friday night, calls for camp. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Leanne? <laughs> I wanted to update you on Northwest Technical Center's professional development and in-service. For the last three years now, we have offered what we call strands. And so, can you hear me? Um, we offer what are called strands, and so our staff can self-select depending on what they bought for their learning for the year. And so this year, we had um, a blue student with trauma. And the second strand was connecting assessments with power standard because we're knee-deep in uh, proficiency-based learning right now. And uh, so we just met January 2nd, and everyone's enjoying their classes and learning and getting work done for their classroom. So it's very applicable. I wanted to invite you to a taste of Franklin County, which is January 26th, and that's at City Hall. And I want to say this is the fourth year that our culinary arts program has uh, participated. And so they'll be doling out some good um, tasty treats so, so uh, don't hesitate to get your tickets for that and then a quick update on our career development center um, Lisa wasn't able to be here tonight um, we have a medical coding class starting um, this evening and then ongoing um, through the spring will be phlebotomy clin clinical medical assisting licensed nursing assisting welding and the parent educator course Chris um, I just wanted to bring your attention to our um, a reconfigured uh, assessment schedule. Our students are in assessments uh, this week. Um, in the past, we've had two assessments, and then by and large, students left campus approximately 11, 30 or so uh, without lunch. This year, uh, we've been able to work it out so that we've built in um, enrichment periods every single day from uh, 10 o'clock to 11.30 which allows students a chance to either make up work or to get help in attaining um, proficiency prior to an assessment and um, a chance to connect with teachers as need be. Um, we're offering the brunch, which has, I think, been a pretty good success. Um, everything ranging from muffins to nachos, so um, I want to thank our good friends at the Abbey for that. And it also has a designated makeup time, so I think it is truly a significant upgrade relative to how we have an assessment week. I think it's very consistent with the notion of proficiency and giving students multiple opportunities to attain proficiency as well as opportunity uh, for necessary preparation and makeup. Um, I think there was some student chatter that may disagree with their principal on this, but I think in the long run it's very much educationally sound. Uh, it's efficient. It's a good use of um, taxpayer support and um, I'm very pleased the way our teachers um, collaborated to make this happen. Uh, Chris, Chris, are you happy with the, uh, uh, the response to the uh, problem that occurred uh, during, uh, with the, the note on the bathroom wall? Um, was, it, was it executed properly, all the, the, the things that are in place? Yes, I was very pleased at the way that went. Once again, I can't thank our staff and kids enough for the way they responded. Um, so understand, this was our first day with this new schedule. We had that interruption. Um, St. Albans PD worked very closely with us. 
we have a new SRO, we have uh, Officer Moritz. He was very helpful in making sure that things went well. Uh, Chief Taylor provided us sufficient support. So we were able to do an evacuation in the uh, South Building and then bring those students back in when it was deemed safe through our uh, work with the police. And then we were able to evacuate the North Building and then bring those students in. We did extend back our time just a little bit so that kids could complete exams. They were still done, I think, by around 2 o'clock or 2.05. And um, Kevin was up and I appreciate his support and kind of overseeing the things so that it all worked pretty smoothly. Uh, communication to staff and community via email and on the web and through uh, what we used to call Alert Now, our messaging system uh, to all the families. Uh, took some calls early and sort of a flurry of activity uh, as things were live, but um, overall I think uh, it went well and people understood uh, what was going on and appreciate the communication. I didn't get any calls personally, uh, which leads me to believe that we communicated effectively. Thank you. Anna? Um, we also had a professional development day on January 2nd, um, which could have uh, presented with some challenges. We brought in an outside speaker, his name is Andrew Jones. Uh, he used to be a teacher out at Mount Abraham High School. And I brought a group of teachers to see him and a colleague present last year at a workshop in Colchester. He is now um, a curriculum coordinator for the Mill River School District. And he was a Roland Fellow, uh, where he did work and research around proficiency-based learning and is also a doctoral candidate. Um, and his thesis is on proficiency-based learning. So he spent a day with our faculty. Um, and our faculty is very much like a classroom of learners, where we have some who are just getting started with proficiency-based learning and some who are doing it really well and need to be um, pushed a little bit beyond their thinking to be challenged. And he did a really great job of meeting all of our teacher learners where they are and uh, challenging them and pushing them appropriately uh, with this new system that we are all uh, implementing this year. So it was a really, really good day. And the feedback has been really positive from all teachers. He was great. I look forward to working with him again. He's really, really great. Good. Yeah. Heather. I'm going to touch on some fun stuff. Not that the other stuff isn't fun, but we have our semi-formal winter ball this Saturday at 7 o'clock. Uh, it is uh, being overseen by Jen Parent and Polly Rigo, and it is a fundraiser for our prom. So everybody's going to be dressed up all fancy. It's always fun to go and see that, see the kids out of the classroom, get jiggy with the music. So uh, that's a little bit of a winter celebration we have going on on Saturday. Uh, Joan. Okay, I'm going to bring it back to some of the professional development. Actually, um, learners and leaders, uh, I got the privilege to work with four of the teachers, one from each of the schools, to pull together our um, writing assessment for this spring that we're going to be piloting that will kick off us having a K-12 on-demand writing throughout our district. And I got to work with a teacher from each one of the schools, and they finished up the one that has to be used in the spring. And their work is just amazing. It has been such an honor to work with teachers that have so much talent and really are interested in looking at how we can um, provide consistent education for all of our kids in a continuum from kindergarten through 12. And I don't say pre-K, not because I forgot it, but because we decided there's one thing they shouldn't have to do, which is to start giving us a writing piece in pre-K. <laughs> so that was intentional. That was not because I forgot that. <laughs> Angela. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, announcements around um, some great uh, fine arts events that are happening at Say Tech. Tomorrow night at 7 p.m. we have our uh, winter bands concert. Um, it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be great. Um, you walk by the Kiva when, when they're playing, and I just stood there today listening because it's powerful. Um, so that's tomorrow night. Uh, next Thursday, the 25th, is our winter chorus concert. Um, so that will also be at 7 p.m. And then on February 15th, which is also a Thursday, our first and second grade fine arts night will be happening at 6 p.m. Um, the students uh, sing. They're going to be doing some um, little bit of movement and dancing within that. And they also um, showcase the artwork that the students um, have created. It's, it's really great. So those are some things we have um, coming up. So the board members are around. Um, they're great, great to see. 
Jason? Uh, actually, I actually have something this time. Uh, uh, maybe you saw our snippet. We put a short 60 to 90 second video up last week. Um, our youth leaders helped us with the kindness booster. Um, we're kicking off the, between now and February. We're really focusing just on acts of kindness throughout the school. And so the youth leaders held a couple of assemblies for the school to kick that off. And our IT department was great in helping us put together all the footage and posting a little bit out so families could see what was happening at the assembly. So if, uh, just go out and practice kindness. And Stacy. Good. All is good. All is good. Sean, any parting shots? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Items for next meeting. We have a policy. Truancy. That's about it. Yeah, budget's done. Budget's adopted. I have to revisit it. I just have to sell it. I just got to sell it. Okay. <laughs> Item 11, we have no reason to go into executive session. That concludes our agenda. So we're adjourned, folks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.